hooked up with Tony uh, early uh, early in the year. Said he'd lease some property out here in Wyoming, and uh, Tony's a good friend of Dennis Hep. Dennis is a guy that we've hunted with uh, multiple times. Me and Mike have been buddies for five, six years now. My buddy Tony here got this place, and it's just awesome place to hunt deer. And I give him a call, I give Mike a call, and I said, I got a place where you go kill some big deer if you're, if you're interested. And old Mike, he jumps right on it. The spinner on this is we brought the muzzleloader over. The way that Tony said the country was, um, you know, so broken up in some really tight canyons, he was thinking we weren't going to get the long shots that, we, that we're usually looking for. We're going to end up stepping right on these deer a lot of times. And so I talked to him about bringing the muzzleloader over, and he said, yeah, that's a great idea. I brought my nephew over, Derek. That's Aaron's little boy. He's got a twin brother named Danner. Now Danner drew an elk tag this year, and so did their dad. And so they went off at elk hunting this, this weekend, and we brought uh, Derek down here with us to hunt deer. He was feeling a little left out, I think. I could tell he was getting um, kind of kind of down in the dumps. He's, he hasn't drawn an elk tag yet and been able to go. And so bringing him over here at a chance to kill a nice deer, he was pretty excited. Well, we got out of school, or I got out of school to uh, come over here, and I wasn't expecting to shoot a deer, but they put it together and made it so that I could shoot a deer. Opening morning, deer hunting in Wyoming. We're hunting some pretty awesome badland country here, kind of in eastern Wyoming. But it's a miserable cold day. Uh, we've been out since sun, or since sun up and uh, just glassing these really these really rough canyons and draws and hopefully the weather cooperates it's been rainy it's been really cold and really windy it's going to make it a challenge with the muzzleloader but i think with the way that this topography is in this country we can we can sneak in close and and get the shots we're looking for but uh we just got to find the right buck first and then it's on so the difference with derek's hunt and my hunt we are looking for a, a management deer a, a deer with uh um, some genetic defect that was going to stop him from being a huge trophy, you know, a big three by four or a crab claw deer or something like that. And so the, the trick was getting out there looking at a bunch of deer, but actually looking for uh, a specific deer, one that was going to be real big, but also not quite make the trophy quality list. And so it just took a lot of glass and a lot of, um, you know, a lot of looking, looked over a lot of deer and finally found the one that Tony wanted to get rid of is a big mature 3x4 that was going to do a bunch of breeding this fall and we took him out of the gene pool. Well we found a pretty good buck. It's a 3x4 with kind of a funny brow tine. It's one of these cold deer they're wanting to get off of this place so Derek's going to man up and uh, use the muzzle loader. It's about a 300 yard shot it looks like if we can still get on him. Well, those deer got down in the trees on us. We didn't get up to this hill quick enough. And they just, they're feeding down in there, kind of out of the wind. They're not scared, they're not spooked, but uh, I mean, they're just, they're just taking cover like we're gonna do right now. We're gonna head back to the truck. It's not a far walk. Um, kind of maybe circle around, get a different vantage point, see if we can look into those trees that they fed into. Uh, but if not, then maybe we'll come back tonight and see if they feed back out for us. But right now we're gonna go try to get warmed up. Well, we circled around, 
see if we can get back on those deer. Kind of came on the ridge on the other side of them. Oh, we're sitting here out of the wind. It's no wonder they're kind of on the same side of a ridge as we are. We're well, just out of the wind a little bit, but we have them down there. It's about 350 yards. Uh, it's kind of windy. They're laying down. We're going to sneak up there, sit down, set up, see if they stand up. And if they do, maybe we'll get a shot. Nice shot. <laughs> Good shot, bro. Two minutes. Oh, we had to wait that guy out. Um, Derek made an awesome shot. It was 315 yards, kind of little angle, a lot of wind. Um, Tony, did you see all the blood coming out of that Dude, thing? Just squirting blood. Hey, is that your first muzzleloader kill? Yeah. First muzzleloader kill. Beautiful buck. Just what Tony was wanting to get out of here. Nice big three by four. And uh, Derek made an awesome shot. Dude, nice shot, man. <laughs> that was wicked. Sweet. I don't even think we need to reload. No. Nah, good shooting, buddy. That's sweet. You know, 310 yards, you can do it with a muzzle loader just like you can a rifle. I mean, if you just go through the process, get the right ballistic data, the right information, uh, building a turret that matches, and then pairing it up with this rangefinder, and it's perfect. I mean, on the money. Hey, that kid couldn't have made a better shot. I'm pretty proud of him. It's awesome. Look at that, just everywhere, huh? Chunks. You know, even though you're shooting that 325 grain bullet, I mean, it packs a punch. We're only 300 yards. It still doesn't have like the, the friction and the shear that happens from the super fast velocity cartridges, you know? So even though this perfect shot took out vitals it's still gonna run I mean he ran a hundred yards basically didn't he oh yeah so maybe yeah 70 100 but he's 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 there I mean he's right over here all this blood I mean it's it's pretty awesome Derek made an awesome shot Derek Derek slipped that bullet right in there just right behind the front shoulder the way he was quartered it came out in front of the other shoulder uh, which which was fine for the shot we were taking uh, but that deer that deer left a blood trail that that anybody could have followed. It was it was probably the the worst, the best, and the worst blood trail I've ever seen in my life. I mean, every step there was a pile of blood, pile of blood, and and we went to, you know 100 yards and, and found him piled up. Hey, hand me that muzzleloader. Grab those horns and show them off a little bit. Look at that thing. What a stud! What a stud! That that is awesome. Look at the mass right here, buddy. Hey, what do you say about that, huh? What, that's it? <laughs> Boy, speechless. I'd be thanking these guys and a and, uh, couple high fives and, you know. Hey, so we held a couple minutes. You know, we probably could have held one, you know, put it about four inches further back and might have came out a little closer to that front shoulder, but I mean, dead's dead. I mean, that's a entry wound. As far as where he was, perfect. So, congratulations, Derek. Good job, buddy. Thank you. All right.
So if you're in a position where you get a rock outcrop like we're on right now, or a log, you can go ahead and scissor your bipods. So take your bipod, make it like a scissor so when you actually put it over the rock or over the log, it's not going to move front and back. Take your rear sticks, you still got a good rear stick support. You can also use your bag if you have to. When I get down behind this, I can still do the same thing. I can slide my stick slightly back and forth for elevation. And this gives me a really good support. As you can see, the rifle is really solid. This is going to allow me to take that shot, and I can still take a thousand yard shot in this position. For more long range shooting tips, subscribe to our YouTube channel, watch us on Long Range Pursuit, or visit us at gunworks.com. A lot of good deer on this place. We've seen a lot of nice younger four points, just like this one, kind of up and comers. Just a lot of good deer. It's pretty awesome. As windy as it is, I mean, we're kind of sheltered right here, but as windy as it is, all these deer are kind of on these these faces, just out of the wind. These were down same way, just kind of down in these little cuts. It makes it hard to glass from on top. You almost have to get right on them before you can see them. But it's pretty cool. A lot of a lot of bucks. We're just gonna take a short hike up to the top of this hill, do some scouting. There's a bowl on the other side of this hill that earlier this summer Tony seen some deer in there, a couple good bucks. I mean, there's no really reason any for him to be anywhere else. So we're just gonna get up there and perch for the night. We can kind of see 360 and and uh, just kind of keep an eye out and see what we see, but not a far hike and uh, could pay off. But we'll get up there and see what happens. Yeah, the ranch is pretty unique because there's so many, uh, there's so much oil and gas going on out here that there's a lot of roads, uh, well-maintained roads. And even though we're very remote, it's very limited out here, there's really good roads to drive and, and find vantage points and glass from. And so it's just, it's just one of those hunts that's, that's hard, but it's easy as well. I mean, you can get around on this ranch very well and see a lot of the country without having to hoof it, you know, very far. Well, the ranch has quite a bit of gas and oil development on it, so there's, you know, there's a, a pretty good network of roads, you know, well-graveled roads throughout the ranch. Uh, as broken up as it is here with the cuts and the draws and, uh, you know, deep cedar canyons, honestly the best method is just to try and glass as much country as possible. You know, we'll, we'll drive for a while, um, try and get back in some deep nasty canyons and draws and, and glass it. And, you know, it, the thing about this country is you can move 20 feet in glass, a whole new view. You know, it, it's hard to, to see everything, but you know, the, um, the elk are making a comeback here. Um, I think they've doubled or tripled in the last three years. The antelope are pretty plentiful. Um, we have a couple of pivots that are dry right now, but um, you know, they're pretty well concentrated along the river there. Uh, a few whitetail and uh, Mule deer are really coming back, you know, um, putting on a lot of mass with the grass this year. Well, we're just out of, just about out of glass and light anyway. We've been sitting up here on this knob for about three hours, just kind of watching this basin full of timber. And it's hard to see anything. There's a few does moving around. Uh, we've caught a few elk running through here, but uh, nothing with horns. A few deer over here, a few over there, but just nothing what we're looking for. We've got Dennis and Derek over on the other side looking this way. Um, Tony's over there. Uh, we've pretty much got this basin covered, but just haven't found what we're looking for. We're gonna give it a few more minutes until the sun goes behind that next mountain, and then we're gonna 
pack it up and go find something hot to eat. It's been pretty chilly today, but high hopes for tomorrow. So we've seen a lot of good deer today, uh, just not the one we're after. They said nicest morning we've had so far. It's uh, sun's up, uh, the ground's frosty, it's cold out here, but it's just beautiful. There's no wind. Uh, there was some fog coming off the river this morning. It was pretty awesome. We've been seeing some great deer. We saw a really good buck this morning, kind of a tall, narrower deer. Had an inline in the back, you know, probably a mid 80s type deer. And uh, just a little weak on his backs, you know, or he would have been a contender. And, and uh, Tony and I are just kind of thinking, kind of still talking about it this morning if we should have chased that deer or not. Really nice buck, but we're just looking for something better. We're looking for something in the 90s. That's what we're going to hunt for. Um, we've got a lot of country and a lot of time left to do it, and so we're just going to stick with it. But if, if every morning was like this, I don't know if I'd ever go home. It's pretty awesome up here. Uh, this morning, you know, we got up, we seen some really good deer this morning right off the bat. One that, that Tony and I were tempted to maybe make a play on. Um, just wasn't quite there. Um, motored up to another glassing point, and on the way up there, we spotted these two deer trying to slip out of this canyon on us. And um, it was a, it, there's not a lot of footage probably between seeing that last big buck and actually getting on this one and shooting because we didn't do much. We just we drove up to a new spot and on the way up there we we found these deer. Just a, a short stock off the road there to get in shooting position and and uh, made a great shot. It's 400 yards, same muzzle loader that Derek shot. And uh, same thing, he went about 30, 40 yards and piled up and we had us a dead deer on the ground and, and a good trophy. It's 399, 400 yards. Keep an eye on it for me. Still there? He's going down? Yep, that's dead deer, buddy. <laughs> oh, man! Well, we didn't need the follow-up. He's uh, He went about 50 yards through those trees and, and piled up. I can see him right here with my eyes. But 400 yards with the muzzle loader, with well, 398 or 99. Uh, but that happened pretty fast. I mean, we've kind of been road hunting these oil field roads and, and uh, come up over this knob and see him. We kind of had to sneak in here and, and get set up real quick, but... I mean, it happened pretty fast, but he's on the ground. He's a big buck, so uh, I can't wait to get my hands on him. But muzzleloader, Wyoming, we killed a couple big deer this week, and uh, I can't wait to get my hands on that one. Let's go grab him. That shot? Yeah, he's right here. I got him. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, nice. Sweet. Look at this stuff right here. These kickers. Both sides. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Awesome deer. Cool. It's got some mass. Nice. Where'd we get him? Quartering. Cool. Well, he didn't go very far. We just killed him right over here, about what 50 yards from here. Yeah. Ran this way, and uh, um, 
piled up right here. It's awesome. This is the cool stuff right here, huh? Yeah. Sweet. Looks like, brow. Looks like a fishtail. Uh, well, I've tried not to send any pictures home because I'm pretty excited about this deer. He's really, uh, he's really heavy. We actually threw a tape on him, and, and his mass at the top was almost the same as his base. I mean, he, he just carries his mass very well, and he's just a really cool deer to look at, kind of bladed out. And so I didn't send any pictures home. So I'm just going to walk through the through, through the kitchen door with this buck in my hands, and she'll get excited. And I think uh, I think Aaron will too. I'm, I'm glad Derek got a good deer and I got a good one as well and I think uh, everybody's going to be happy back at the shop. It's been a real pleasant experience. Those guys, uh, they're top notch. They know exactly what's going on with that long range stuff. Um, just really geniuses on the, on the marksmanship and, and the, the range finder. It's, it's a pretty sweet program.